Well, here's a view we haven't seen in a while. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another little video. Today I'm going to be looking at a couple of locomotives. We just got back from a trip to a small town in Wisconsin, uh, Columbus, Wisconsin. Uh, they are accessible by Amtrak, so that's how we got there. But one of my reasons for coming along was a large antique store which is in that town. And this antique store claims to be the largest in Wisconsin. It was a really, really impressive antique store, like um, borderline overwhelming, especially if you're someone like me who is searching out for a few specific things and really wants to scope every corner of it. By the end, I had found one dealer who had some good stuff, but they had a ton of these locomotives. They're the very typical sort of uh, four drive wheel, um, plastic body steam locomotives. It averaged out to be 25 bucks a pop for these locomotives, which is pretty good considering they're in decent shape. The first we're going to look at is this Lionel, uh, a 242, I guess, which is actually reflective of the wheel arrangement I just noticed. Um, it looked in good condition on the bottom. It does have this plastic drive. Doesn't really have a... It does have a headlight, okay. It has a headlight lens. Uh, it has a two-position reversing unit. It is a plastic-bodied engine, however, uh, that does not necessarily mean that this is a bad locomotive. And, um, it looked clean enough, and considering the price, which is 25 bucks for the engine and the tender, that was a pretty good deal. The second locomotive that I got, or they, they the two pieces are kind of separate. We have the locomotive, which was maybe like 22 bucks. It's a Marks. And this is the specific one with the motor and the wheels that are compatible with Lionel switches. Um, the pickup shoe is a little dirty, but I figure that I can fix that. It does have a headlight. Um, it doesn't have any, um, wheels in the forward or the back, so I think it probably came that way from the looks of it. It's very typical Mark's locomotive, 400, I think this should complement my uh, 666 very nicely. Uh, it seems to be in decent shape, and even if the armature has a lot of gunk on it, which I can see it already does, this is a very easy mechanism to work on, especially in comparison to the plastic uh, motor in this, which is very hard to work on. Yet, yeah, usually these are fine when you get them. You don't really need to do too much work on them. The last piece is this a little tender, which is a... Actually, I think a pre-war tender, it says on the sticker. I don't know if I should trust that or not. But this was $10. Honestly, I think it's more like 5 bucks for the value. But for me, the reason why I picked this tender out specifically is it has one of these little crab couplers. And I don't have a regular tender for Marks that has this kind of coupler, and I have some old cars that used to belong to one of my family members that I've wanted to pull for a while and I haven't been able to. But this seems like a pretty solid Marks car. We have stamped uh, tin. I believe that's tin, yeah. And the base is good. It's very clean aside from the axles and a little bit of the wheels. But other than that, this is a pretty solid piece. So here we have a pair of cheapos, um, the Lionel and the Marks. Let's see if either of these runs. Here we are at the layout. I don't really have a filming situation set up here, so we're just going to have to deal with some backlit shots of these um, all black locomotives. So I hope that that won't be too distracting. Here's the Lionel. Let's see if it runs. Okay. Not only does it run in forward and reverse, but it also has the headlight working. So far, really promising. Um, glad I bought this one. All right, let's test out our Marks engine. Ooh. Yeah, this thing is really sparking like crazy. It is blue. Okay, um, that is not good. Uh, 
I guess the old saying does hold up that the only rare marks train is one that doesn't run because this one does it run. I would say it runs, but it is very sparky and that's probably because these wheels have not gotten any love for a while. Um, yeah, let's uh, take these over to the workbench and do a little bit of light work on them. Let's start with our uh, Lionel, which ran the best of the two. Uh, it does look pretty good, however, it could probably benefit from some TLC. Let's uh, get started here. That was a little bit of the cosmetic. Let's um, do a tiny bit of mechanical, I mean... Let me just get a little bit of this gunk out of here. I'll just use this little pick thing. Get out that gunk. It's never really a bad thing to clean your wheels. I'm gonna use some of this uh, detox it. cleaned on this locomotive. Let's go on to just some light lubrication. You do not need a whole lot of any of this. A little loud but I think we can deal with that. If it gets run in it should be fine. Let's move on to our little Marx locomotive. I think a more in-depth cleaning is in order and this seems like a very simple locomotive to take apart. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Before we work on the uh, body shell, let's take a look at everything that's kind of not ideal with this. Uh, this part of the pickup shoe is gunked up, the wheels are very much gunked up, which is why there was so much sparking, and the armature could use some work, although do I feel like undoing those tabs today? Not particularly. And I don't think that was the most pressing, pressing issue with this. I don't know. We'll uh, clean the things we absolutely need to and see how we go. For now that's fine. Now I think we're also just gonna end up taking sandpaper to these wheels because they're just so gunked up with that carbon. <laughs> You can see that actually makes quite the difference. Um, pretty sure that shows up on camera. That was pretty intensive, so I'm just gonna do the rest off camera. So I just uh, finished polishing up all the wheels. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm just looking at this armature though, and I think I want to go in, and since I've already got this kind of a part, try and clean that up a bit. Now, if you're kind of new to this sort of thing, I wouldn't really recommend disassembling anything to do with the motor because 
it is sometimes finicky and you might lose stuff and get frustrated so i would recommend waiting until you've kind of gotten some experience i'm just killing time while i'm trying to find the right screwdriver okay Again, this is, I think, where the uh, little baking tray I have here is very crucial. So we have our brushes in there. Hopefully we'll be able to lift this out without having to take the side rods off. It's tight, but hopefully the little brushes do not fall into the motor block because that would be a pain in the ass. And our armature, oh, okay. Just make sure that's in there correctly because you never know. Oh, that is just a pain, okay. One sec. Okay, so here we have our armature and it's reasonably dirty. I think it was a good decision to clean this up, at least so far. I'm gonna take this little scrap of paper towel and I'm gonna put a little bit of my detoxit stuff here. Um, you could probably use like inox or something. Also, I hear that's a good uh, cleaner, but this is a decent electronic cleaner. So that is significantly better. Uh, the spaces in between the plates actually look pretty good. I don't think I need to do anything there. Um, let's look up here. I think, uh, that's fine. Our brushes probably use a little bit of a quick touch with sandpaper. Just the quickest touch. So a little bit of that. That improved it. And uh, now we just have to put this back together. Okay, af after a lot of struggle putting this thing together, I'm probably going to make like an unlisted video with um, the maybe 10 minutes or so of me struggling to put this whole assembly back together in it because I was too lazy to remove the side rods. Um, you can check that out. I'm probably going to link it in the video or something or in the description. I don't think it's worth your time, but it might be entertaining. But anyways, the armature is nice and clean. Everything's put together, yada, yada, yada. Let's um, oil this up a little bit. Dang, this mechanism has a lot of resistance. Don't know if that's normally how these are. But it's a double reduction. I think that's what these are called when they have the, the gears that are like that. So it's harder to move by hand. Let's put the tiniest, tiniest little bit of oil on here. Not as to leak onto the armature like crazy, but just to kind of give that a little help. Let's uh, finish dusting off this shell. I just ran the motor and it works pretty good. And that is our other locomotive. So let's take both of these over to the track to see if they've improved. And let's start with our Lionel, the best runner of the two to start. So it's a little noisy. Let's check out our marks. The worst runner of the two in the beginning. Let's see if it's any better. Alright, 
so to um to close off on these two i think that um honestly the locomotive that's seen the most improvement is probably the marx engine it started out being the worst running of the two sparking all the time and i think it's ended up being actually the best runner of the two it doesn't make an annoying noise and it's pretty smooth and it's reliable with the forward reverse position uh, the Lionel, I think, has seen the least improvement because it started out okay and it ended up okay. Um, it does make that noise when it's going around, which, yeah, it's not too big of a deal, but I'd rather it not. I think a lot of it is just working in the lubrication that I put in. I specifically put it in here because I know that a lot of that noise is coming from the armature shaft, but um, yeah, I'm not too sure. Other than that, I would say that about 25 bucks per locomotive and tender, assuming these tenders work perfectly fine, is a really good deal for some running units. So now let's um, go in and maybe run these for a bit. So after running these in for a bit, the Lionel actually stopped making the noise, I think. Probably because the uh, lubricant just kind of worked its way in while I was running it around. And both of these run great. I mean, I think it might have just been me getting really lucky. But I've generally had good luck with these cheap locomotives. And I definitely think that you get your value for money if you really don't care about scale. Because these are reasonably reliable um, they can actually go at decently slow speeds without cutting out and uh, they can pull more cars than you'd expect um, i just gave them modest loads for the running session i wouldn't try to throw 10 post-war cars behind these but they'll handle light loads just typical stuff you can put weights in them and they'll run even better but overall um, if you can find this kind of locomotive for cheap Definitely recommend it. There are a lot of things to look for in finding the best one possible. And I do believe I found the best of the worst, if you could say so, with Lionel and Mark's plastic-bodied steam engines. So thanks for watching and have a great day.